pleased to say that Sergei Sivkatch joins us now. He's the CEO of Ukraine Invest, live for us in Kyiv. Sergei, thank you so much for your time. And I think put this into context for us first, because there is no off-ramp for the war yet. There's few private investors who are happy to risk making large investments in Ukraine. So how are you unlocking private capital right now? Thank you very much for the invitation and this opportunity to talk to you. Well, first of all, Ukraine is open to cooperate with investors. As our president said, Ukraine is not only open, you know, proud and strong. We are also doing business right now. We are open to all investors. Government of Ukraine is working on state incentives, on deregulation, and we have some very good results. And today we see that some big international companies like Carlsberg, like um, Kingspan, like Kronospan, like Nestle and other uh, big players like Bayer, they already invest in Ukraine even during the war. And in our pipeline, as you rightly said, we have tens of investment projects that have been developed right now and companies not looking at Ukraine as a humanitarian uh, project. They're looking at Ukraine as a profitable business case. So looking at it from a profitable business case, but at the same time, Ukraine has had a poor track record on corruption. That's a fact. The rule of law as well and the influence of oligarchs in key economic sectors has been a real handbrake on investor confidence pre and during the war. So how are you overcoming some of those barriers and overcoming some of those issues? Well, I think some of this information is outdated and maybe it goes back to 2010, 2012 those years when uh, Yanukovych uh, team was in place. And also this is a part of Russian propaganda you know, to, in order to limit um, interference of international investors with Ukraine. But let's look at practical cases. Companies like Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, Cargill, Bungia, all similar international players, they operate in Ukraine for many years. And these companies, they simply operate under FCPA rules, so they cannot be engaged in any corruption activity. So this is uh, a clear indication that business can be transparent and is transparent of Ukraine. Of course, we need to deal with corruption issues as any country throughout the world. We have to bring it down. And we have seen very strong and rapid reaction of top Ukrainian officials uh, politicians to corruption cases that were brought up lately. Uh, senior officials were arrested and now being prosecuted. So this is a very good sign for international investors. Sergey, this week we've seen really positive signals for Ukraine on NATO and, and European integration. Obviously, your goal here is to de-risk and incentivize private finance and investment. So are you encouraged by the integration measures that we're seeing coming from the West here, um, integration into the European Union, integration into NATO? What is that going to mean for Ukraine's investment landscape? EU membership and NATO membership, they are paramount, not only for security of Ukraine, but for economic development. When we received a status of the candidate of the EU back in 2022, we as government's investment promotion agency received tens of investment requests straight away because companies uh, understood that we are going to join EU and they already were planning their activities in Ukraine. So that was a very strong signal. NATO membership, very important, as I said, not only for security, but for economic development, because some you know, Ukrainian regions that are closer to uh, Russia, they'll be always under uh, risk if we will not have proper security arrangement. And NATO membership, full membership, this, it's the best security arrangement for Ukraine. So. As uh, our president said, results of the NATO summit are good, but could have been ideal if we would receive invitation to join NATO. Hmm. And so, okay, just before I let you go, very quickly, what's the most promising sector of the Ukrainian economy to invest in right now? Where can investors expect the best return in this environment? Well, at the moment, we see uh, investments in a uh, sector of manufacturing of construction materials, in agri-processing, and in logistics. So these are top three, not, not counting IT and fintech. This sector was growing in Ukraine for many years and even during the war. And we 
uh, work now on special programs to ensure investments in Ukraine against war risk. So we have draft law that will enable Ukrainian expert credit agency to cover this risk and also international organizations like US, DFC and MIGA, World Bank's group, they are also considering now investment projects to cover them against war risk. We have seen uh, support from our Polish partners. They have passed a draft law to the Parliament of Ukraine that will enable Poland to cover investments into Ukraine as well. So this activity is picking up. The risking mechanisms are being developed in Ukraine and internationally. And we already uh, expect right. uh, increased FDI inflows into Ukraine.